first story. OP meets his high school bully years later. There is no other way to say this. She was a bully to me in middle school, humiliated me early in high school, and thankfully ignored me our senior year. She was always the popular cheerleader type. And when we were in middle school, she would verbally bully me and make fun of me and my appearance whenever she could. And she would do it as the leader of a pack of she-wolves who would write fake notes to me, take photos of me, and photoshop all sorts of vile things and plaster them all over the school. When we were in the 10th grade, she catfished me there wasn't even a word for it back then, and eventually got myself and another guy to meet one another after school both of us, thinking that there was a cute new girl in school who liked us. Needless to say, both of us were the butt of jokes for the rest of the school year. Finally, by the middle of our junior and senior years, she thankfully forgets that I exist. Flash forward to the present. I'm parking my car and getting ready to go into Wendy's for lunch when I hear my name being spoken by a person directly behind me. I turn just in time to see my tormentor coming in for a hug. My first reaction was to run because of our previous dealings with one another. But she is quicker than I am. She stands there, chatting in line with me like we were the best of friends and reminiscing about grand old times that never existed for me. She and I had two very different high school experiences. I assure you, she is the popular girl, and I am the social outcast, not even cool enough to be accepted by the nerds and hipsters. So I get my food. I was planning on eating there. But since it was apparent that she and the woman she was with were eating there, I got mine to go. I wished her well and tried to bolt out the door, all the while losing whatever appetite I had. But before I left, she asked me for my number. And like an idiot, I gave it to her. The next day, I got a call from my sister. BTW, while I love my sister, she also lived a very different life than I did in high school. In fact, I think my tormentor idolized her, she was a grade ahead of us. My sister says she got a call from Lady Voldemort wanting to know all about me. She said she was asking all kinds of questions about my life, what I was doing, and if I was seeing anyone. I told her that I had run into her at Wendy's, and that I was sure that this was some form of elaborate scheme of hers. My sister said I was a dumbass, that we are grown adults, and that I needed to see what was right in front of me. I of course responded by saying that what was in front of me was Lucifer on Earth. Sure enough. My phone blew up that night with a text from a strange number. It didn't take long to deduce that it was her. She started with a small talk about how great it was to see me again, and how wonderful I looked. Then she goes into asking me why I never asked her out in high school. I nearly flushed my phone in the toilet from that one. Now mind you, she is saying all of this on text without me replying at all. Finally, I respond back with, It was nice seeing you. Within a minute of hitting send, my phone was ringing. I guess she decided that my response was good enough to give me a ring. She asks me out for a date, this Friday night. Here is my dilemma. From an outsider's perspective, she is gorgeous. I mean a solid 8 or maybe 9 on a 10 scale. However, whenever I hear her speak or think about her, I can't see her physical attributes. I see visions of hell on earth with her riding in some fiery chariot being drawn by black horses that snort smoke and fire. I realize that I am being overly dramatic, and in my real life, I am long past being socially awkward. I stare down drunks and arseholes every day in my job. Did I mention that I was a police officer? And when I was at Wendy's I was on the job and generally I'm not afraid. She, on the other hand, makes me want to crawl under my bed and not come out. Is it possible for her to change? What the hell do I do with all of these repressed emotions that I obviously have pent up from years and years ago? She either is oblivious to what she did to me or does remember and is trying to forget. Since I told her I would go out with her, I have gotten several texts about looking forward to Friday. My heart races every single time I get a text from her, but not in the romantic butterfly in the stomach kind of way. What does the group think here? Has anyone else ever had a mortal enemy become a date? First update. I know it's early for an update, but I wasn't sure anyone would read if I put this in as an edit. After reading all of the responses to the original and several PMs, I have made a decision. It would not be fair to either of us for me to go into Friday night with her, and ambush her with problems from my past. So I gave her a call this afternoon and invited her to a late lunch tomorrow when she gets off of work, which she was thrilled to do. I plan on talking with her then about things, and we will see what happens from there about Friday night. I am either setting myself up to be the world's largest douchebag, or I'm going to get burned again. Her acting all giddy every time I talk with her does make me feel like a SHT for holding on to the past. I just plan on easing into the conversation and I'm going to be very specific about the catfishing thing. I know for a fact she was behind that one, and that is the one that hurt the worst. I'll let you guys know what she says. Second update. Sorry, I forgot to update you about our lunch. 
I arrived early enough so that I made sure to be there before her, so I could pick out a secluded spot so we could talk and not be interrupted. She got there in about 15 minutes. After I did, right on time, BTW, and she spotted me and came over to sit. She was just beaming and had a huge smile on her face from the moment that she came in the door, and it honestly made me feel like a creep who was laying in wait to ambush her. But when she started to talk, her voice just sent chills down my spine because, even though she was saying nice things, it was still that voice that I remembered from years ago, and that helped steal my resolve. She was saying how thrilled she was to meet with me today, and then how much she was looking forward to Friday night. At this point, the waitress came to get our order, so that caused a natural pause. I decided to wait till the food came so that we would not have any further interruptions, so we just made small talk. Food comes, and I take the shot. Simply put, I just asked her why she was now interested in me when all through our school years, I was less than dog sht to her. Yes I said dog sht because, well just because. She actually teared up a little. But to her credit, she didn't cry or anything at this point. She goes on to say that she knew when she did the catfishing thing that she had gone too far. She stated that she had no good reasons for doing anything other than that she was very immature and very wrong. She then went on to tell me something I had no idea about. I guess the other guy who she tricked with the catfishing scheme did not take it as well as I did. She said that about a month after she did that, he physically attacked her on the way to her mom's car one day while she was leaving cheerleading practice. She had a fractured jaw, contused lungs, and two broken ribs. I knew she had missed some school, but at the time I had no idea why, nor did I care. She then said that she never came to apologize to me for it, because, after that, she was afraid and did everything in her power to avoid me for the rest of our time in school. The other guy transferred out before that school year was up. She did make what I thought was a really heartfelt apology to me. I am usually a decent judge of character, and believe me, in my line of work, people lie to me all the time, so you pick up on traits, and she either is one of the best liars I've ever come across, or she was genuinely sorry for doing it. We then talked about middle school. And while she admitted some of the things that happened, she let me know that some of them were not her, but girls who she was hanging out with at the time. Some of it made sense. The other was really irrelevant anyway because it was the catfishing thing that hurt the worst. She never tried to bolt out of the cafe, nor did she ever not look me in the eye. After a few minutes of this, I decided that my honor had been satisfied and that I would change topics. What started out as lunch ended up being an entire afternoon and early evening spent together walking and talking. Man. Has she ever had a rough time since high school? She was actually very down to earth. Not at all like I imagined her being. Of course, my imagination of her before then was her speaking with a forked tongue while chanting scriptures from the Book of the Dead. The main takeaway I got from her today is that she is genuinely interested in me. She admits that the uniform from the other day was a turn-on, but that she wants to get to know me for me, which sounds cheesy when I read it typed out here. But when she said it, I was kind of impressed. Honestly, this was a great day for me. I got closure, I got a heartfelt apology, and at the end of the day, once I got past thinking of her as the daughter of Satan, she was actually a decent person to talk to, and yes, I now see that she is wickedly hot. By the end of the evening, she was all smiles again, and telling me how she hadn't felt this close to someone in a long time. She actually gave me a good night kiss. Anyway, Friday night is on, for sure. Third and final update. Hey gang, I thought I'd give you what should amount to the final update on this. I went out with her last night, and things could not have gone better. Honestly, I had fun with her, not the way you are thinking, BTW sick bastards. And we stayed out way later than either of us planned. Thank God I didn't have to go to work today. This wasn't a normal date for me. Generally speaking, I tend to end up in bars and listening to crappy music all night for some woman who I really don't connect with. In many ways, this was surreal because I was having the time of my life with a person who, up until 48 hours ago, I had spent well over a decade either dreading, fearing, or hating, depending on the day of the week. We went effing bowling, and it was her idea. I haven't been bowling since I was a teenager, and you could tell. She laughed at me because of how badly I sucked. But all I could do was laugh with her because she wasn't making fun of me. She was having a great time. After that, we went and ate, and she demanded to pay because she said she asked me out, which is the very first time in my entire life that a date has offered to pay for my meal. I was taken aback at first, but the more the night went on, the more I appreciated the effort she was putting into this night. The more we talked, the more we found that we had in common. I got the most passionate kiss I've ever received in my life as we said goodnight. I'll be damned if I didn't feel like I just lost my virginity again when she did that. F. I can't even explain it or how it felt. 
I've never been kissed like that. We are going out again tonight, BTW. At this point in time, I think I can close this out because I am positive about my own question. I don't know if everybody can, but she certainly has changed, and I'm looking forward to getting to know her more. Thank you to everyone for their support and answers. Keep strong. Late edit. I'm not going to make another post just to say this, but Saturday's date went better than Friday's date. In fact, I'm just now home from her house, and the only reason I'm home now is because I have to pull an extra shift tonight that I can't get out of. We plan on having dinner together on Tuesday. Update. Hey gang, I know that I said my last update was going to be my last update, and that was my intent, but I know a couple of people have asked me for an update in the future if anything has ever changed. Well I'm writing tonight to tell you that we are now completely and 100% official. We had the talk tonight, and as of now, both of us are off the market. She is the one who brought it up, and the joke was on me because she said that since our first date, she has had no interest in seeing anyone else and hasn't gone out with or done anything with another guy since before our first date. The irony is that I actually had a dinner date about a week after our first date together. But I cut the evening off with that woman because I actually felt a little guilty. I told her that I did go out on the date, but I also made sure to let her know the reason for my putting an end to the date. As to everything else, this has been amazing. The more I get to know her, the more I am finding that she is really just a down-to-earth girl in fact kind of a tomboy who happens to either be blessed or cursed depending on your point of view with being insanely good-looking. We have had long, and I mean long five-six-hour long conversations that have covered every aspect of our lives. I now know a lot more about the time she was arrested and the circumstances leading up to and after that event. Tonight, she actually said that she felt really vulnerable because she couldn't hide the fact that she was falling for me fast. She didn't say I loved you, but I have a feeling she wanted to. I'm not there yet, but I will admit to having very strong feelings for her as well. And for once, those feelings are not of loathing or fear. I won't deny this either. The first time we were intimate was just bizarre as hell not the act, but what was going on in my head? But like a good trooper ha, I made a joke at the expense of the state boys, I tarried on. Anyway, I guess that should be it for me. If I post again in the future, it will either be to say that we are broken up or moving in together. Long story short, I am so glad I let go of my past because if I hadn't, I would have missed out on the best relationship I've ever had to date. TLDR. We are now officially exclusive. Second story. OP's wife left him, so he couldn't leave her first. I met my wife I'll call her Anna during our first year of university. We dated through the university and got married right after her graduation. Things were happy for about a while until Anna discovered a lump in her right breast. I encouraged her to have it checked out. She was reluctant to do so, but eventually did because breast cancer runs in her family. And sure enough, that's what she had. The good news, if it can be considered good news, was that the breast cancer she had was extremely treatable with chemotherapy and radiation. Based on her family history, her doctor also recommended a double mastectomy for her. This put Anna in a really dark place. I suggested she go to therapy but she outright refused and said she never wanted to hear me suggest that again. So I did my best to be encouraging and supportive of her. I took time off work to be at every appointment with her. I took on 100% of the household chores both inside and out. I did all of the shopping. I drove Anna everywhere she wanted to go. I planned out special dates for us. I gave her an hour-long foot massage every night. I literally did whatever I could. About six weeks into her treatment, Anna brought up the idea of going to stay with her sister Sarah for a week. This honestly relieved me, as I was burning the candle at both ends trying to accomplish everything, and I thought some time apart would help us both. Two nights into her stay with Sarah, Anna called me and said she wanted a divorce. She said she had read a lot about men who abandon their wives when their wives get sick, and that she was determined to leave me before I could leave her. I can't put into words how much this crushed me. I loved my wife. She was my everything. I begged her to reconsider. I told her I had never thought of leaving her, not even once. I asked her again to go to therapy. She refused again. I asked her to go to couples therapy with me. She wouldn't. I asked her what I could do to convince her I wanted to stay. She said there was nothing. I am a man, and therefore I would leave. End of story. It took about a year because of where we live thanks to COVID, but eventually everything was finalized. I ended up selling the house and splitting the proceeds between me and my now ex-wife. I didn't want to stay in that town anymore, so I put in a transfer request at my job and ended up moving to a town about two hours away. For the past couple of years, I've been focusing on myself more. I have a dog. I've been on a few dates, but nothing serious. 
I picked up hiking as a hobby and started gardening. Out of the blue, Anna called me three weeks ago. She said she'd been in town on a trip with friends and saw me, and all of her old feelings rushed back. She said she was sick and out of her mind at the time, and that I couldn't hold her words or her actions against her. She said she still loved me, that she always had, and that she regretted leaving me. She begged me to give her another chance. I'm so confused. If I'm being honest, I still love Anna, but I'm no longer in love with her. She broke my heart. I was devastated when she ended things. It took me a long time to get my head on the right track. But I also know she really was in a bad place because of the cancer. Do I owe it to her, and what we had to hear her out? I'm scared that if we reconnect, I'll always feel like she'll have one foot out the door. But maybe that's unfair. I don't know what to do. Should I give her another chance like she wants? There is one comment that sums this up. I never recommend couples getting back together unless the issues that drove them apart are fixed. Cancer was not the problem. Lack of communication, trust, and a willingness to compromise was on her end. She made unilateral decisions without caring how they affected you. She refused therapy. The way you're writing this, it's still all about what she wants. Which sounds like the dynamic that destroyed your marriage. So what changed? I wouldn't do it. But if you want to open the door, you need to start with brutally honest couples therapy, and her active and honest participation is non-negotiable and a deal-breaker otherwise. Have the therapy to hash out and bury the past, and see if dating is an eventual possibility. You guys need to start from scratch. And it's okay if you try it, and you can't move on like she expects you to. She hurt you, regardless of her motivations. Sometimes you can't undo things. Update post. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who left comments on my original post. I now know what people mean when they say, rip my inbox. I posted that and went to bed, never expecting it would blow up so much. By the time I woke up, the post was locked not sure why, so I couldn't respond to any comments. But I read as many as I could and tried to take everything into consideration. Many of you suggested, I reach out to my ex-wife, Anna, for an in-person conversation. The overwhelming consensus was that meeting her in person would tell me all I needed to know. And you were right. That seemed reasonable to me. I texted her, and she jumped at the chance to meet, and we did so yesterday after I was done with work. I chose to ask her to meet at a local coffee shop. Maybe it sounds bad, but I didn't want to meet her at my house or anywhere private, just in case. Anyway, Anna was already there when I got there. She got up and hugged me. I let her, but I didn't hug her back. Then we sat down. I asked her to remain quiet while I talked, and then I told her everything. I'm going to sum it up here because I honestly don't remember everything I said. I think I talked for like 10 solid minutes while she just sat there and teared up. But I told her things like how much she had devastated me. I told her that I would have stuck with her through thick and thin, no matter what. I told her that I loved her, and that hadn't changed after her diagnosis or treatment plan. I told her that I was broken after she initiated the divorce. I told her how hard it was for me to pull myself back together. A lot of you pointed out that if Anna and I got back together, I should be worried about what she would do the next time she got sick, or if I got sick. And you were right. So I told her that too. And she got mad and interrupted me at that point. She said, I was being unfair. I wasn't taking into consideration her mental health at the time. She said she wasn't thinking straight, but now she was. I took the chance to ask her if she'd been to therapy. She told me she hadn't that she had no plans to, and that she didn't need it. I have to admit, that crushed me a little. I asked her why. Just, why? It's the one question I've really wrestled with over the months. And she said that she'd gone looking for support groups, and found a lot of women who had stories about their partners leaving. She even mentioned Reddit, funnily enough. She said she talked it through with her sister, Sarah. Anna said that Sarah, to her credit, had tried to dissuade her from divorcing me. But between social media and some of Anna's friends, Anna felt like she had to go through with it to be seen as a strong woman. That is, word for word, what she said to me. I don't remember anything else exactly, but I will never forget that. She broke my heart and threw away our relationship because somehow, in her mind, that translated to being strong. She then started trying to tell me we could get back together again. But at that point, I just told her flat out that wasn't happening. What it comes down to for me is that I just can't trust her. I would always be worried about the same thing happening again. She cried a lot and tried convincing me for a little while. When I got up to leave, she threw her iced coffee in my face and stormed out. So yeah, we're definitely not getting back together. I have the closure I always wanted. I wish it felt better. I've been dwelling on it for the past day and a half. I keep wondering if there's something I could have done better some way I could have saved our relationship. But I know there's not.
I've blocked her number. I kind of hope I never hear from her again. This is flared as concluded since they're not getting back together. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.